Yo, 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 welcome back to Michelada Monday with It's Benny, though. I am excited. Uh, today is going to be a different episode. I'm actually going to do it by myself. Uh, before I get started, uh, I'm a little nervous because uh, some of the questions on here are pretty, they're somewhat intense. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to get myself a little loosened up today. Uh, so I'm going to take a little quick shot and then I'm going to go ahead and get right into pouring my Michelada today. Cheers, everybody. Yes, I needed a chaser for sure. Well, here we go. Here goes nothing, right? So, uh, today is episode, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, technically episode six, but five on my YouTube channel, uh, because the episode number four, the original episode, I went live on Instagram. So if you don't know my Instagram, uh, it's um, it's Benedo. Um, I don't don't remember if there's an underscore or not. Well, anyways, anyways you see it in my in my my link tree on my YouTube channel and whatnot. Um, so you can see my stuff on on there, my live sometimes. I also do polls. So if you want to get involved in my polls, some of the questions I have to ask, or you know, sort of how to get people engaged, uh, I use my Instagram polls for that. Uh, the quizzes, all the other good stuff. And today's Michelada is just a simple. Modelo, Modelo Michelada, I didn't want to go all crazy today since it's just me, but next week, I got something for you, uh, something pretty pretty clever, so I'm excited. Cheers, everybody. All right, let's get started here. So, again, I got these questions from uh, my Instagram uh, polls, the, the live. I said, I told people, hey, I'm going to do a, a podcast by myself this Monday. Um... So this is what I'm doing. So the first question that I have here is actually pretty funny. I'm just going to ask this one right away. It's pretty funny. Just let's set the, the tone a little bit. Um, <laughs> she asked me, do you have hairy ass cheeks? No, I do not have hairy ass cheeks. But I know you know someone that does. And you know who asked me. You know who has it. Um, but no, I do not have hairy ass cheeks. Um, That's hilarious. <laughs> You're too funny. I'm not going to I'm not gonna tell everybody who you are. But anyways, let's get right into some of the good stuff here. Um, somebody asked me, and I, I think it's a good question to start off with, is what made you want to start a podcast? Uh, that was from SkyBoogie45 on Instagram. Um, so I mentioned this on my live, like I said, two weeks ago. Um, so we're at work, and people were asking me, well, not just me, we're all having a conversation of what are your hobbies, right? And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm like, well, I'm not athletic. I, You know, I'm not really... You know, I'm not, I don't play music. You know, I don't have, I don't know what I have a hobby. I don't know what my hobby is, right? Uh, so we're just in there talking, and my friend at work was like, well, you like talking? I'm like, yeah, I do like talking. I could talk a lot. Um, I like hosting. I like being MC, master of the ceremonies. Like, I love I love doing those type of things. Um, I was like, yeah, I like, I like talking. Uh, then they said, why don't you start a podcast? You know, podcasts are something that's very in right now. Uh, you know, the vlogging, the video podcasting, the audio podcasting. I was like, yeah, you know, you're, you're right. Like, I do like talking. I think podcasts would be fun. This is like back in November. Again, I talked about this two weeks ago on my live. If, if you heard it, sorry if you're hearing it again. But um, it took me from November, December, January, March, April. I started in April. It took me five months to get my equipment together, get some of my content together, the name of the of the channel. Um, and I decided to meet you on the Monday with this Benny, though. The reason why I did that is because, you know, how many of you work Monday to Friday? Right, you have Saturday Sunday off, or you go to school Monday to Friday. You have Saturday Sunday off, and you have to go back to work. You have to go back to school on Monday. You're like, oh, Monday's such a drag. Uh, you don't want to go back, right? So, it's like blah, right? So I decided to have me chill out on Monday because let's say I had a long day at work, a long day back from from your busy weekend or your fun weekend, your turn weekend, your lit weekend, whatever you're doing for the weekend, um, and Mondays are like, ugh meh blah right whatever you did was just i describe it come back home right put on my podcast on youtube uh sit there watch me and my guests or for example just me today and just have me chill out with me right and with that being said let's have a little cheers real quick again i'm gonna have to take some breaks in between to have a drink there's nobody here to dialogue with me so forgive me so when i drink i want you to drink okay um so hopefully you have your prepared because i'm prepared here today for me to drink more than one if I need to, but I probably won't get there. So we'll see. Uh, so that's the reason why I started my podcast. 
thought it would be fun. I thought it would be something different for myself. You know, I been working on my job for nine, nine years. Um, I love my job. I love what I do. I love the career choice that I chose. Um, it's very relevant to me and my past and my life story. So this is a diff- little different. And I think, actually, I, you know, those of you who have heard f- uh, this from me before is I want to actually have my write my own book, an autobiography, just, just to tell my story. Uh, I feel I have a story that can sort of help people in some way, shape, or form. Um, you could pick and choose things that, you know, you feel would help you the most. But I feel like I have a story that would help people to get through that next step, right? Help people, those who feel like they can't, that they really can, right? So that's why I'm on here, right? It's another way of being an outlet for those who feel they couldn't have an outlet or they couldn't, they couldn't find a way through through hell, right? And I don't know if you guys might have heard the saying, right? You're going through hell, you're going through hell. Key word in that is you're going through hell, right? You're not staying there. You're going through it, you're going to get right through it, and you're going to see the light at the end of time. You're going to get out of it, right? Don't stay there. Could you stay there? You're not going to get out of it, right? You got to stick stick around and say, you know what? I'm going through it. Yeah, you're going to go through it, but key word, going right through it, right? And you're going to come right positive at the, on, the, on the other end of that tunnel. So keep fighting, y'all. Uh, but... Now, the question I sort of sort of pick it back in on the first one is how do you pick the people to talk on a podcast? So first is I'm choosing people that are 21 and older, right, because I'm having to meet a lot of my guests. Uh, so if I ever have guests on the on the pod that's under age 21, um, I'll, I'll probably be drinking lemonade with them or tea or soda uh, or water. Right. I won't be drinking any alcoholic beverages because I don't condone underage drinking. Um, so definitely want to make sure that usually those who are on my pod are 21 and over. So we can drink together and have, have a michelada and just chill out, right? Um, next is, if you're interested, I mean, I want you on the podcast. Um, if you're a little shy, I mean, I can work with you if I have other people on the pod. If it's just me and you, it might not work. Uh, but I want everybody that wants to be on the pod on the pod. That's my goal. Um, I have quite a few people that want to be on it. It's sort of hard to pick who and when and how. Um, I get in my head a lot, right? I, I, I'm an overthinker. Um, it's just natural for me. Like if someone gives me something, I, I overthink it. There's an easy solution to things sometimes, uh, but depending on the situation, I can just sit there and, and just overthink. Right. And that's sort of one of my, I guess, not negative traits, but complex traits, I guess you can say, um, about myself. Right. So, but anybody that wants to be on the pod, I want you on the pod. Again, I also have some close friends that you're going to be seeing over and over again. You know, you've seen Khalila on the pod. You've seen Jared on the pod. You've seen my cousin Juanita on the pod. My other two cousins, uh, Vincent and Cecilia. Um, so you probably see some of those people back again because uh, they're just fun to have on. And I would like to have some people that are very controversial. I want to get, you know, deep into some of these conversations. Uh, I have some things coming up soon. Hopefully the next couple of weeks is my goal. Uh, talking about, you know, mas- masculinity, machismo, culture. Uh, femininity, right? Talking about, you know, should women work? Should should women not work? Stay at home parents type of thing. Uh, You know, I want to get sort of controversial a little bit, right? Uh, So, stupid fly right here. Uh, So, yeah, anybody that wants to be on the pod, I want you on the pod, okay? Let me get to the next few other questions, but before I do that, let's take a drink. So, I think these questions stem from sort of the first three episodes. So I think what I did is people thought this podcast was going to be about relationships, right? Cheating, dating, stuff like that, which I think is a great topic and it sort of was really engaging. Um, So some of these questions that I have here for me and I'll go ahead and answer them is what are your thoughts on current dating culture? Um, I think the current dating culture is very... I wouldn't say scary. I wouldn't say intimidating. How would I explain it? It's, uh, I mean, I would just say we're complex again, like I said earlier. I mean, it's very complex because the dating culture nowadays, I think right away we go to online dating, right? We go to social media. We go to, you know, apps such as Tinder or uh, Bumble or Grindr or, you know, Facebook dating or, you know, um, Christian Mingle, all these things, um, Instagram, right? Sliding people's DMs, right? Uh, how many of you actually remember? I, I was talking to someone the other day. How many of you remember when Instagram had this feature where you would see your followers 
and what they've been liking, what they've been commenting, who they follow, right? So it was like Instagram was really messy at one point. Um, I just want to throw that out there because that was funny because like, it was really messy. Instagram was, man, you're trying to get people caught up. So I, I think a lot of people love that feature is gone. I used to love that feature because I used to just be there like a little machismoso, a little meticha. I used to love at what people would look at and love. I'm like, oh, like they like that picture. Like, what the heck? Um, I thought it would be funny. But anyways, um, the, my current my thoughts on the current dating culture, I think, like I said, very complex because I think what happens is nowadays we're very scared to interact with people. You know, you have two sort of personas. You have an online persona. And you have an in-person persona. And sometimes they don't even mirror each other, right? You may see someone online that acts and behaves in, you know, in a totally separate way in person. You're like, whoa, online, you're this person, you're that person. But in person, you're not like that at all, right? So you're sort of giving you, yourself two personas, two sort of different lives, especially those who are clout chasers, those who, you know, who are social media influencers. Um, you know, they're friendly behind the screen, but in person, they're not so friendly. Or, you know, they're catfish behind the screen, but in person, they're not that cute or they're not that pretty. Um, so I think dating culture, I think because of that that complexity with online dating, it took away from a lot of those social interactions that's necessary. Um, you know, when you used to just go to the bar or go to, a, you know, a restaurant or, you know, meet, meet someone through a group of friends um, where you can't really fake automatically right it's easier to fake a life online than it is in person does it happen yeah don't get me wrong it's hap it happens you can be a total total you know catfish in person when it comes to your personality and who you are um then when what you actually really are right but i think dating culture is definitely different nowadays for those of us who grew up in a time where social media and technology was sort of barely coming along uh for those who are a little younger i mean those maybe born in like um in the early 2000s, uh, may not know, you know, sort of how that is before social media. Um, but it sort of takes a lot away from from that that first step, right? Um, it's easy to slide into people's DMs and to walk up to somebody and say, I think you're cute, right? Actually, I think you're good looking. Um, it happens for sure still, don't get me wrong, it still happens, but I don't think it happens as often. I think that, I think that takes away from, so I think social media takes away from those opportunities, that first impression, right? Like that love at first sight type of thing. You can't have a love at first sight when you're on Instagram and sliding into people like, ooh, like, is she a baddie, you know, or he, he cute, whatever, and you're liking everybody's photos, right? It's not, a, not, it's not a first impression, not love at first sight because you're seeing so many facets of that person without really meeting that person yet. I mean, love at first sight is more like you see them, right? You meet them for the first time. You never see them before, um, and you're like, wow, right, type of thing. So dating culture is definitely different. Um, either you get with it or you don't. I mean, you can still date not online. You can still date in person, then, then whatever. But, I mean, definitely online is such a very common thing nowadays. Um, definitely not nothing bad about it. It's just uh, different. It's just very different. Uh, let's see. Let's move forward. Uh, and then, by the way, that question that question is from Biggie underscore Wu. Uh, and, again, Biggie underscore Wu asks again, what are red flags that you look for and the red flags that I let slide? Um... I, you know what? This is very hard for me to say because I don't date as often. I don't, I don't put myself out there, and I think that's a fear of just just rejection. Um, I mean, I don't like being rejected. I don't think anybody does, but I mean, I'm a very, very, very sensitive person. Um, you do one thing, you say one thing, or you do something that I think it's one way, but it's not really intended that way. Like I'm very sensitive, so I I fear rejection a lot. Um, I have a lot of, uh, you know, self-esteem issues and whatnot. However, as I get older, um, you know, as I with, recently went through some sort of, you know, health changes uh, in my life where I lost some weight, I started, look, I started feeling better about myself. So I have much more confidence now than I have in the last couple of years. Um, so the dating is something I don't really do. And I think dating is very difficult, especially when it comes to online dating, because that's the only type of dating I've sort of done is online dating. It's very difficult because... And I'm not sitting here just, you know, to toot my own horn, but I mean, you have so many people you match with, right? You're like, ah, you match with a lot of people. Now you're trying to maintain conversations with 15, 20 people, right? And I'm the kind of person where if I find someone out of those 20 that I really click with, I stop talking to everybody, right? So now that I stop talking to everybody, talking to this one person, 
everybody else are sort of ghosted, right? So then now, let's say me and that one person don't really work out. You know, two, three weeks later, I can't go back into the, my, my, my messages and start messaging them again. They'll be like, well, where, where have you been, right? It's sort of like red flag for me on my behalf. Like, I'm ghosting people, right? So it's, I, I, I'm showing red flags, right? I don't communicate well. Not that I don't communicate well. I think it's very stressful to communicate with 20 people at one time. Um, you're trying to manage talking with, you know, this person, that person, that person, and you're talking about different things. You're like, whoa, what did we leave off at? So you have to scroll up to all your messages. Like, oh, that's what we talked about. Go back down, right? It's stressful. I think it's a lot of stress. Um, so online dating is definitely, there's a lot of pros to it, but there's a lot of cons too. Um, but that's the only dating I, I've done because I don't have that confidence to go up to somebody, you know, at a bar or I keep on saying bar, but I mean, anywhere and just say, hey, I think you're good looking. Hey, like, here's my number or here's my snap or here's my Instagram. Have I done it before? Yeah, I've done it before. But um, it's, it takes a lot for me and probably I have to have a few of those inside me too to uh, be able to say that. Um, but yeah, so red flags, I guess, is communication. I mean, if you can't, if you can't carry a conversation on if, whether it's in person or not, I mean, that's a red flag. I mean, I don't want you sitting there and I'm I'm giving everything to you and they're asking me how my day is. Oh, my day went well. You know, I did this, I did that. And I'm like, how's your day? Good. <laughs> okay. What, what do you mean good? Like, oh, how was it good? It was good. Man, get out of here with that. Like, I, I don't even want to talk to you anymore because it already shows that your intentions are not really, maybe not for a long-term relationship. It might be your friends with benefits or hookup or you're just killing time. I mean, I don't know, but every everybody I talk to, I I put in some deep conversation. I like really putting into some work. Um, let them know how my day is, right? Let them know what my weekend plans are. When like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, Friday I'm doing this. Saturday I'm doing this. Sunday I'm doing this, right? I literally write paragraphs at a time. People don't like that. People are intimidated with that because um, they may think I'm moving too fast. I don't know, but um, I mean, I, that's how I am as a person. So for me, a red flag is communication. I mean, if you can't communicate with me and give me, meet me sort of where I'm at, I mean, I don't expect you to write paragraphs, but I expect you to give me some information, right? Don't just say good, or I'm chill, or cool, or hey, right? Don't give me those type of responses because those type of responses, you're not going to, we're not going to date. I mean, you know, if you're trying to do other things, you know, I don't know, that's a different story. Uh, you know, you can say all that, what you want, as long as you're good looking, they may happen. I don't know. I'm not a hoe or anything, but... I'm just saying, I have needs too. <laughs> With that, cheers, everybody. Right, we got our own needs. I'm glad I took that shot earlier. Definitely helped me out a little bit to sort of relax. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to say this one towards the end. I also have a couple of DMs. Give me a second, guys. Oh. <sighs> What's the most cringe song on your current playlist and seeing <laughs> some of it? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I don't know. I think what a, a cringe song would probably be like maybe one of the, my Britney Spears songs. Um, I mean, it's pretty cringy to a lot of people, I guess. But I guess one of her songs would probably be cringe. Let's see which one do I have in my playlist. I have several in my playlist, but let's see here. I don't know. She has some pretty good songs. I mean, I like her songs. Let's see real quick. Give me a second, y'all. I did say y'all a lot, too. <laughs> That's a funny question. <laughs> How about the one that's like, I'm a slave for you. <laughs> You can follow me now if you want to. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I like, I love me some Britney Spears. I mean, I think she's pretty dope. Uh, I mean, I have, a, I, have, I have a very diverse taste in music. I mean, you would hear, if I have all my things on shuffle, you're going to hear things from country to, to you know, 2000s, to pop, right, to to oldies, uh, to rock, to uh, rap, some rap. I'm not, I'm not a huge rap fan, but you hear some rap. Um, some old school West Coast rap, um, or you like you hear some Britney, some very uh, you know girly songs. Uh, you hear a lot of things on my on my playlist. So I mean, I've very very diverse taste in music. 
Uh, but yeah, I guess probably my, maybe one of my cringiest songs on there is Britney Spears. And I don't play it a lot. I don't bump my music in my car because I get embarrassed. I'm like, I did. People don't. People don't don't care. I mean, Jared all the time when I'm in my car, he's like, who gives a fuck? I'm like, I don't know. Like, still, I'm not gonna play. He's like, who cares? Right? But still, like, I'm not gonna sit there and play while I'm, you know, bumping down going to LA or something. Like, I mean, maybe if I'm in West Hollywood, I'll play. It. Uh, you know, people out there be like, yeah, you know, type of thing. But I'm not gonna be playing that music really loud unless my windows are rolled up, um, or in my room, right? So, anyways, the next question is, who would you consider the one that got away for you? Hmm. I guess I never really dated a lot, like I said. So it's a difficult question. <laughs> oh God, I don't want to say this one. Um, so there was this person um, back in high school. Uh, <laughs> she was really cool, um, and this is funny because my whole life I've always said this: if there's one female I would date. One female that I would like probably see a future with was it was this one female. I really thought it would work out. I mean, she was just amazing in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> there's this funny story where, I mean, this is weird for me. So that's why I knew it was it was something that was probably God sent at that time. We uh, we I was at our house and we were talking, and then uh, I was leaving, and uh, I gave her a hug. For some reason, during that hug, like, I got, like, bricked up. <laughs> as much as I don't want to say, like, I got so bricked up. I got in my car, like, what the, f like, how did I get bricked up from a hug? I mean, that says a lot. I mean, she's probably the only person that I feel like would have been a perfect soulmate for me at, at one point in my life. I mean, I still have a lot of love for her. Um... She's married, you know, has like three kids, four kids, um, and whatnot. But I mean, yeah, that's probably the one that probably got away, if anything. Uh, I was honestly willing to give up any, everything else that I felt was was different about me uh, for that one person. But um, I mean, if that person's listening, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to hear this. I doubt you're listening to my podcast, but if you are, and if your husband's listening, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, I'm just speaking freely. Forgive me. Uh, but I mean, we were really good friends at at one point, and uh, yeah, so that's probably the one I got away. Definitely. Um, <laughs> what is something you've always wanted to tell me? Hmm. Something I've always wanted to tell you. I mean. I'm the kind of person where I'm, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. So if there's things I feel like I need to tell somebody, I would usually tell them already right away. Uh, people tend to sort of think I'm a little clingy. Um, I'm not clingy. I'm just very emotional. Um, I think I've dealt with a lot in my past to where I could sort of freely express things without having to be afraid of it, right? I mean, I think a lot of things I wanted to say to this person I've already had, but I mean, I want the best in people, and I see the best in people. Um, you can be the shittiest person in this world, and I see good things in, in you. Um, and I, I want to see good things for people in the future. I, I don't ever feel like I said I've hated anybody. Hate is such a strong word. Um, there's people, some people I've disliked a lot, but I mean, even I tell my nephew sometimes, I mean, I mean, I love you, but it doesn't mean I don't like you right now. Right. Uh, you know, but what I can say to this person asking that question is, um, listen to what people are telling you. Uh, they're not telling you because they think they know right from wrong. It's that they know what's good for you. And... There's like a lot of potential um, and you can't let, you can't let what people expect from you, like the bad things, to sort of come to pass, right? People tell you like, oh, you're bad, you know, you're this, you're that, and you can be like, you're all fucking people are thinking I'm bad, so I might as well just be bad. 
right? I think that's what that's what messes people up, right? When people tell you these things like you're not gonna make it or you're bad or you're shit, you know, you're gonna be just like your mom, you're gonna be just like your dad, right? Well, well fuck it, everybody keeps on telling me shit, I might as well just do it, right? Just let me just fucking relieve all this stress, let me just do it, because that's what everybody thinks of me anyways. I mean, I might be guilty of that too, because I might have said that before, but um, I mean, you have a lot of potential, so don't let those things that people tell you to sort of dictate your future, right? Um, do better. Um, uh, go for the things you love the most. I mean, even if it's things that people don't agree with, uh, I mean, in the end, you got to make yourself happy, right? So, yeah, that's, I guess, that's sort of that. <sighs> Cheers, everybody. Getting a little, a little deep here, huh? Let's see here. Do you feel like you are where you want to be at in life? That's some chaos X underscore. Um, yeah, in a way. But there's a lot of things I, I want to do and I thought I would be at, at this age. I'm 32. About to be 33 this year in September. Go Virgos. We're the best. Only because, you know, we're the very, very... I think I think Virgos are very like selfless in a lot of ways. I'm a very selfless person. I mean, I put other people's needs before myself. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I'm, I'm I stopped do, I've stopped doing that a lot, and um, but I still do though in a lot of ways. I put other people's needs. I mean, if it's my last ten dollars, it's I mean you need it. I mean, I'm gonna give it type of thing, right? Um, but anyways. I feel like I'm at where I, I want to be in a life when it comes to my education. I mean, for those of you who don't know, I mean, I am a first um, generation college graduate. I'm the only one in my family that graduated the high school diploma. None of my siblings did. I mean, one day later on, I hopped him out with it, getting his GED. Um, but I'm the first one. No one modeled it for me. I mean, nobody modeled education. My parents didn't graduate. Um, high school dropouts. You know, I have five... Four older siblings, one younger sibling. I by the time I graduated high school, nobody graduated. My, my younger brother didn't graduate, so um, it, it definitely was a challenge because nobody modeled it for me. Right? And I want to actually have a series where I'm gonna talk to first generation college graduates. But when it comes to my education, I mean, I definitely surpass my personal goals. I wanted to get a college degree, my bachelor's degree, but master's degree wasn't my in my goals at first. Um, but I eventually got it. Um, I mean, so I, 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 it's educationally, I'm, def, I'm definitely where I want to be in life. I don't plan on going for my doctorates. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want that kind of stress or the loans. Um, but yeah, educationally, I'm where I want to be. Financially, I mean, we're in California. For those of you who are in California, uh, it's expensive out here. Uh, I want to be. I want to be making by the age of 35. I want to be making six figures. I've always told myself that. Um, so that I have like a little over two years, about two and a half years. So I want to be making over a hundred thousand dollars by 35 years old. Um, so financially, I mean, I, I can do a, a diff things differently. Um, I mean, it's fin fi financial. It, it's very difficult. I mean, if you don't, if you don't learn those, those, those practices on how to like properly, m properly manage money, you're never going to learn it. I mean, it's a very difficult task. It takes a lot of self-discipline to um, to get where you want to be financially, right? Uh, so financially, I can definitely, I'm not where I want to be, but I, I'm okay and content with where I'm at. I'm not fully happy where I'm at financially. However, I'm content. I'm not broke, right? Thank God, you know, I thank God every day for having a roof under my over my head because there's people out there that don't. Um, you know, I thank God for the food I have that I have to eat. Uh, you know, I thank God to be able to do things like this, right? Be able to afford to, to even have a podcast, right? It's expensive. This equipment was over $1,000 altogether. Um, probably like $1,300 probably around there. So it's expensive, right? So, again, I'm not broke, but I'm not where I want to be. Uh, when it comes to myself emotionally and other, other areas, I am definitely feel like I am happy. Um, I'm happy. I do feel lonely a lot. Uh, there are, you know, as I mentioned earlier about my some some little bit about my about my family. 
Um, you know, they're all sort of not involved in certain ways. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to share all, all that right now. But, um, you know, they're not as involved. So, I, you know, parents are not there. You know, siblings are not pretty much there. Um, so it's just me, right? I don't have any kids. You know, I have, you know, my little cousins, you know, my other first cousins and my aunts, whatever. That's great and all. But, you know, I don't have, like, my family. So I definitely feel lonely a lot. But um, I want to have my own kid. Uh, very soon I want to have my own kid. I mean, I want to do surrogacy. It's a lot of money. So I actually changed some of my financial goals. I wanted to have a home. I wanted to purchase a house. But I'm like, why well, am I going to purchase a house when there's nobody there to share it with me, right? I have no, no, no spouse, no kids. It's just me. It's to be sad, sort of sad, right? So I said, instead of having a house first, I want to have a, a home. I want to have a kid. I want to have a baby. I want to have my own child, you know, for my own loins. Um, and uh, I want to name him. I want a boy, hopefully, right? Um, Romeo, Isaiah, or Dino. Rest in peace, Izzy, right? I want to name him uh, Romeo Isaiah or Dino. And I think it would be cool, you know, his nickname would be Rio, R-I-O, his initials. So I'm very strategic when it comes to that. Sorry about that, everybody. I don't know what happened. The lights went off. My computer died. I have my lights connected to my computer. But, um, I mean, other than that, though, I'm, I'm right where I want to be. I uh, definitely want to have a kid. Um, again, I, I want to be a dad so bad. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm, I'm really good with kids. I think I am. Uh, I love fucking with kids. Oh, God, it's so I love bullying kids. I'm a big bully when it comes to kids. I like making them cry. I think it's the funniest thing in the world, uh, making kids cry. Uh, so if I make your kids cry, it's definitely on purpose. Uh, cause I think it's so funny. Um, but other than that, though, being like a little bully, um, you know, I, I think, I think I'd be, I think I'd be a great, a great dad. So, uh, I mean, other than that, though, I think I'm, I'm where I want to be for the most part. Um, there's definitely a lot of goals I want to get to. Um, you know, I have a lot of goals I want to get to. So, but where I'm at right now, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Uh, another question Real quick, and then we're gonna start. I'm gonna start wrapping up here. I don't want to get too too deep on y'all guys, on you guys, on this episode. Um, again, I've always said this podcast is where anything goes, right? Nothing, nothing's off the table, and anything goes. So um, I didn't expect some of these questions to come in. Uh, so, with that being said, cheers for those of you who are still on and watching. I mean, gotta make the best out of life, right? You know, let me slurping and everything huh, on that beer. Um, all right. Next question is, what was your mindset during the worst time in your life, and how did you change it? Sheesh. Whew, that's a tough question. Um, the worst time. How did you, like, it's very difficult to describe my worst time in life. There's probably, like, about three or four very worst times in my life. But I guess... Um, I'm very res I'm very resilient. So, I mean, some things may happen, but give me like a couple of days and I'm back up. I mean, I can't let those circumstances dictate what I'm going to do next, right? Uh, this is my favorite quote. My favorite quote is this, and I don't even know who says it, but I know that it's a quote and it says 10% of life is what happens to you. And 90% is how you respond to it, right? Let's say I'm in a situation, right? Something that happened. Let's say I'm just going to give an example, a real-life example. One of my worst moments is, uh, I don't want to share that right now, honestly. Um, dang. I don't think I want to want to share any of those real-life real examples right now. But uh, let's say I'm just going to, Talk, talk hypothetically right now. Let's say one of my worst times in life is I get cheated on, right? And the love of my life, we've been together for 10 years, I get cheated on, right? So, yeah, it sucks. It happened to me. I got cheated on. However, what happens next depends on what you're going to do, right? So, either you can, you know, beat the person's ass that they cheated on with, um get to catch a case right uh verbally and physically abuse your partner because they cheated on you um let it slide and be like you know what i want you back baby i don't care and you can cheat on again or just be like you know what it is what it is evidently you don't have love for me anymore 
And I'm okay with that. It hurts, but whatever. And move forward, right? You have those choices. Those choices are up to you to make, right? It doesn't... It does, There's no definitive next steps because it depends on how you're going to respond to it, right? It doesn't... The world may tell you how to respond. Oh, don't be a bitch. You know, man, they're cheating on you. You got to go fuck them up, right? Type of thing. You... The world tells you to do to do certain things, right? Society tells you to do certain things. Those are the social norms. However, 10% of life is what happens to you. 90% of how you respond to it. What are you going to do next? Are you going to make the, the right choice, the better choice, be the better person? Are you going to stoop low, right? You know, the passing of a parent, you know? Are you going to let that for the rest of your life? Be like, oh. Right. Think about this. You know, Mother's Day is coming up this weekend and um, well, this past weekend. And uh, I mean, Mother's Day is a very tough time for me, you know, but I make the best of it. You know, um, my mom's an absent mother at the moment. She's been absent since I was 16 years old and it's very tough. Right. I I celebrate Mother's Day for those people in my life who are mothers or those who who have been mothers to me. Right. Um in the end, I wish I had my mother here, um, and she's not. But doesn't mean I'm going to go the rest of my life, you know, but like, oh, my God, my mom, my mom, my mom. Yeah, it sucks, but you know what? I got to move forward, right? Um, I appreciate those in my life who have been mothers. I appreciate the life who have been mother figures. I appreciate those in my life who are friends that are mothers that I see them doing the best that they can to be as a mother, right? As single parents or those who are actually still with their partners and being a parent. I mean, you know what? I mean... My mindset and my worst things in my life is I'm pretty resilient. I, I definitely sink in for, for a few moments. I mean, you know, definitely have been there have been times in my life where I've been very, very depressed. However, it's okay to have those moments. And it's okay to have that time of, of grief, a time of sadness, a time of sorrow, a time of anger, the time of, of just being just blah, right? It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that at all. If people tell you to stop crying, people tell you to stop being sad, people tell you don't be mad, you have every right to be mad and to be sad and be crying for whatever had happened in your life, right? However, you can't let that just stay with you. You can't let that just, just be forever. I mean, you have to be resilient. You have to be like, okay, I had my moment. Don't get me wrong, right? I was sad. Okay, I'm dep- I, I, got, I had my moment. But you know what? What's next? Right. You're still there. You're still alive. You're still here. What's your next step? Um, I'm pretty so I'm pretty I'm pretty resilient. And if any if anybody were to learn anything from me ever, ever, ever in my life is to be resilient is to not let circumstances in your life determine the rest of your future. Right. Um, Because in the end, you make your own choices. Right. Um, So that's that. Uh, There's not really much questions left. Uh, for me today but i do appreciate those who have actually uh, there are some here i didn't even see those let's see if i'm gonna get to these or not let's see there might be some pretty fun ones we'll, we'll see <laughs> okay i'm gonna I'm end i'm gonna end so these are some really good questions but i've definitely at that mark at that time where i wanted to sort of wrap up today but um I'm going to go ahead and share this one. Actually, maybe maybe two of these. And uh, I'm going to save some of these up for an- another, uh, an- another, another time. Is what? who is an animated character you would have totally hook up with if they were real? Sheesh. So, all right. I actually had this class, uh, Psychology of Gays and Lesbians, at Cal State San Bernardino with Professor Todd. Professor Todd, shout out to you. You're a pretty dope professor. And um, he actually actually had us write a question of something like, it wasn't like that, it wasn't animated, but who's your first crush, right? And I think my first crush, as, a, as, as ever since I can remember, was Aladdin. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought Aladdin was so hot. Oh, my God. For some reason, I thought, you know, I don't know. I, he was real. I'm telling you, man. And that's on my bucket list. Someone Middle Eastern. So if you're Middle Eastern, slide up in my DMs. <laughs>
<laughs> well, my God. But yeah, anyways. Uh, next is how many bodies you got? Um, zero. Uh, zero bodies. I'm a virgin. <laughs> I'm not telling you how many bodies I got. Uh, at least not on the pod. Um, when who, when was your first kiss? And give details. And I'm not giving. I'm not answering the last one. Uh, when was your first kiss? My first kiss is actually this is really funny. I was with my sister, and she had this friend, and um, I was like. 12 probably so her name was Shawnee Shawnee Negretti so for Shawnee I, ve- I very very highly doubt you're watching this pod but I used to grow I grew up in Riverside and uh she said you better make out with her I think for, I think some way my sister always knew I, w- I was gay right so she tried to like make me not gay so uh she's like you better make- give her a kiss I'm like I don't want to give her a kiss like give her a kiss so I was bullied into giving Shawnee Negretti a kiss um, so my very first kiss was Shawnee. Um, so Shawnee, it was just a peck, but I will never, ever, ever forget my first kiss. Cause it was, it was so funny to me now. At that moment, I was like, why did she make me do that? Like, it's, she's a bully. She's mean. My sister was very mean growing up, but for some reason I always was with her. I always hung out with her. Um, but she was definitely bullied me to my first kiss. Uh, my second, let me tell you about this one kiss and I'm, I'm going to start wrapping up. So I had this girlfriend in uh, middle school, uh, Elena. You might be watching this. I'm not sure. Uh, so she was my girlfriend in eighth grade, eighth grade. So, you know, I ride the bus home from school. So I'm outside waiting at the bus. Right. So we're there. And then we started making out, like making out, making out, like fucking. Like, right. So I go on the bus. All my friends, you know, I see, I just in the back of the bus, you know, because I was a cool kid, you know. But anyways, uh, I'm in the back of the bus, and then uh, they're like, "Oh my god, you you guys are kissing like horses!" I'm like in there, oh my, they're laughing so hard. And this same girlfriend, I am so sorry if I'm sharing this. I'm, I'm sorry, but not sorry. We're we're older, so I'm okay sharing this. So she had told me one time, "I'm ready when you're ready." I was like, "Ooh, oh, I'm a gay boy." I mean, you guys don't know this, but. I know this, right? But I had, I had a lot of girlfriends growing up. So I'm like, oh, my God, what do I, what I do? What do I do? So I, I told her this, and I feel so fucked up saying this now. I mean, I told her, I don't like that you you don't respect your body and you're going to put yourself out there already at this age. And because you said that, I don't want to be with you anymore. I slut-shamed her. And she wasn't even, she, it was, I would have been her first person. She would have been my first person. But I said, no, I don't respect that. And I said, no. Um, and I feel really, really bad that I did that, but I didn't know how to do it because I couldn't, I couldn't have sex with a girl. So it's funny because I was like, when I came out at 22 or something like that, and I started being more public on social media about things, she messaged me. She's like, I'm so glad that it wasn't me. She thought like it was her, but it was never her. It was really just me, but it was so funny. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm going to start wrap up tonight. I mean, tonight was a definitely, I had a good time tonight. I mean, definitely got a lot of things off my chest. You guys, you guys definitely got to learn a lot more about me um, before I continue. If I wrap up, cheers real quick. I'm going to finish this. Right. So you guys learned a lot about me here. And um, I had a good time. I had a good time. So, I mean, um, there's no point in rating my Michelada tonight. I mean, a lot of you guys might have already had this model of Michelada mix already. Pretty good. I mean, it's definitely a good go-to when you don't feel like making a michelada. But I promise you, next week, my micheladas are going to look so good. But, bro, I want one so bad. Um, I don't know who's going to be on the pod yet. I really don't know. But I know I already have in mind what my michelada is. Some of these other questions that people have asked me, I'm definitely going to save for a different pod for for the future. But um, hope you guys enjoyed today. hope you guys learned more about me. And and uh, I'm, I had a good time tonight. So... With that being said, shout out to my barber who hooked me up today. I didn't show him the whole cut, but uh, hooked me up today. I feel really good today. My drink is bomb. Um, happy Mother's Day for those of you who are mothers. Um, you know, it's not an easy thing to do to be a mom. So shout out to those of you who are still there and fighting, right, for, for your kids all the time. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, um, thank you for being here. Remember, this is a podcast where nothing's off the table and anything goes. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace out, y'all.